name is Dr. Eva Kadir Abba. I'm the president and founder of Gemini Healthcare Group. Through the support of many of you and dedicated volunteers and board members of Gemini, over the past few years, Gemini has been able to make a tremendous stride in affecting the lives of Ethiopian children and their families. For many of us, the small steps that we've been taking has sown the seed for a journey of a lifetime. A journey filled with commitment, passion, personal sacrifice, as well as rewards sprinkled with little miracles along the way. Armed with a compassion for children and a vision for improving the lives of those less fortunate across the globe, the founding members of Gemini gathered in Atlanta a few years ago to lay the foundation for the organization. Through hard work, personal and financial commitment, as well as through the support of dedicated individuals and organizations like you, Gemini is well on its way to becoming an effective healthcare organization, advocating on behalf of children of Ethiopia and providing vitally needed medical and educational services. In the next few minutes, let's take a journey uh, looking back at the work that we've been doing in Ethiopia uh, and seeing the realities on the ground. The journey may have started with Gemini, but it's our collective responsibility to make a difference. Just remember, we may not change the world, but we can save a child in Ethiopia and in our respective communities. Thank you. Gemini Healthcare Group, as you probably know, is a, a non-profit healthcare group that is established in the U.S. Uh, we have three pur main purposes. One is education of the uh, Ethiopian physicians. Second one is providing services that do not exist by bringing in specialists uh, to Ethiopia, not only to do the service, but also to do the training. And the third is, is important. Uh, the project that we have, our goal is to build a pediatric or children's hospital in Ethiopia. Uh, where we are right now in terms of the third objectives is uh, we, we have the land ready uh, to build a 120 bed uh, specialty pediatric hospital. Uh, we have the design ready, so it's almost ready to be built. God willing, if everything is in order, uh, hopefully within the next two years, that's going to become operational. Anyway. We are here at the kids playroom at the Black Lion Hospital, uh, seventh floor, with the kids, the long-term residents of this hospital. And uh, when Desi and I, you see over here, uh, uh, when we came in a little over two years ago, uh, we saw Zeman, who is now nine. Uh, Zeman right here that you see uh, has been living here for over nine years. He has that uh, tracheostomy or that little breathing tube that he has that he was not able to go home because it was not safe for him to go home for. So because of him, we were able to, to start this uh, playroom with the help of uh, and collaboration of uh, Healing the Children Greater Philadelphia Chapter. As you can see, most of these kids, uh, almost all of them have their trach, which is a breathing tube without which they cannot survive. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to go home because these trachs or their breathing machine uh, cannot be reversed safely. So while they're staying here in the hospital for many years, like Zeman, he's been here for 10 years, uh, are not doing much at the hospital. So having this playroom as well as educational room is going to be essential for their growth and development. So, as you can see, these young, beautiful kids with medical situation can be safely and rightfully treated in a hopefully happy environment. Hospitals are, as it is, not a fun place, it's a sick place, but like our friend here, they can do a little, uh, they can take a little time out of their day to play and be kids again. Uh, maybe Desi could say a few words. It's wonderful to be in what we talked about. This is an idea we talked about having this playroom to see it in fruition and the children having, as Dr. Eva said, a place to go. That is um, when they have very few places to go. This is, this is wonderful. So we will keep adding to this, adding more school supplies, more things to help with the children and for them to have fun.
very limited pediatric service. There are now three, four pediatric services in the country for 18 million population. And out of the four, three of them are working here, only one work in a private practice. So uh, why we are concentrated here now, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's a tactical approach. We are going to start establish, to start fellowship program in Ethiopia. That's the only way out to solve uh, the human resource need of the country. This, the main serious problem we have is human resource. We don't have pediatric service. Number two, uh, we are also flooded by a large number of patients. And also, we are, uh, we are uh, and the other problem is that uh, so, 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 so research consuming, expensive uh, 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 discipline, pediatric surgery. So, so, so we are always run, we always run out of, uh, out of uh, shortage of consumable materials and also equipment as well. So, if you address pediatrics problem in the country, or if you address surgical problems in the country, we are addressing surgical problems of uh, uh, the children. That's, that should be the focus around it. Uh, even the black line uh, from our study is 40% of the surgical activities is pediatric surgery. So we have 40% of the problems. Are, so, but we have only three people compared to 45 surgeons working in the, in the hospital. So it is a, a very serious issue. Human resource, materials, consumable materials, and also uh, material like uh, equipments like anesthesia machines, tables, and uh, also uh, we're uh, we also shortage of also very fast going items like stitch and other things. Thank you, Dr. Eba, for coming and visiting our institution. Uh, really, I would like to appreciate your activities in our department and you are in, of great help to us. So as you have seen, uh, the children's play room is well organized and it is well furnished. And also the library is well equipped, the, the computers are in place, but uh, the problem that we have is the computers are not internet connected. Um, probably it is our own problem. The materials are already bought and uh, it is because of the technicians that it is late. So uh, we have a good library now and uh, we still need textbooks, the reference materials and uh, especially uh, the postgraduate students do buy their own textbooks though it is expensive right. i think the biggest challenge is generally having the right infrastructure with the right organization with the right the basic monitoring equipment the basic medications some of them we have maybe not on a consistent basis. Okay. And so the biggest challenge is kind of keeping a consistency in the daily work of, mm -hmm. of the, the standard, the, mm -hmm. the, the practice, the nursing standard, mm -hmm. the, the hygiene, across the board. I, don't, I can't say that it's just within just the doctors. Or the, no, I think when you try to raise a level, you have to start from every aspect of it. And I think that's always a challenge. And, with the medical part, I would say sometimes it's the monitoring, sometimes it's the urgency that lacks. 